Sonic. This one pound ant weight combat robot has a short but storied history in competition. A blue blur of chaos and fury. If you saw my last video on my three pound combat robot division, you might think that these two robots are quite similar, both being two wheel drive vertical spinners. But the story of how they came into existence could not be more different. So here's the quick Sonic rundown. While the three pound bigger brother division was already four years old with collectively months of planning and construction, Sonic was designed and built on a whim just before its first maker battle competition in late 2023. I was planning to upgrade my problematic overhead spinner ant mini mulcher, but procrastinated until there was no time left to outsource the parts I'd need. Rather than drop out of the tournament, with 10 days to go, I decided to whip up a design in Fusion 360 for a bot that would use almost entirely parts and materials I already had on hand. Sadly, what I had on hand was largely unsuitable for a one pound class bot, as I was only selling three pound bot parts at the time. Rather than give up, I designed the lightest possible chassis that fit two Dartbox drive motors and a weapon system I stole from an older Beetle saw robot. I started printing TPU parts the next day and had the first working prototype of a robot inside of 48 hours. And Sonic was born, with the name reminiscent of both its drive and design speed. Sonic V1 was quite simplistic, but the unique geometry was challenging to design. I needed it to be able to self-right if flipped, so a wheel sticking out the back was the obvious move. However, this made the bot very back heavy and prone to somersaults. Pushing forward too hard would cause it to backflip, and it could also end up in crazy death spirals balanced on one wheel. Somehow, it worked way better than I expected, and went 3 and 2, losing twice only to the same robot, and winning the scariest robot award. In its first loss, Sonic managed to tear huge chunks from its opponent, and suffered no visible damage, but weirdly lost to the judges. Still, the weapon system had an Achilles heel. Any solid weapon on weapon hits with spinners kept snapping my motor shafts, forcing me to swap in a new $25 motor after half of my fights. Far from ideal. Sonic came back again in April 2024 with no real upgrades aside from some custom slim wheels so I could have weight to add more TPU walls to the chassis. But the bot that stopped it last time wasn't in attendance. That said, there were plenty of top contenders in my way and this would surely be no cakewalk. With this double elimination format, a loss in the second round led to a nine-fight brutal tournament path up to the finals, where Sonic managed to win it all, taking home a wonderful trophy disguised cleverly as a birthday cake. To date, this is the only time a Just Cause robot has placed first in a tournament. For a bot thrown together in days, this was quite the surprise. Still, this victory came at the cost of buying another $100 in sacrificial weapon motors. From here on out, Sonic really struggled. I wanted it to be a test bed for some new drive and weapon motors I was working on, and designed a brand new Sonic V2. The 5022 hub motor was a huge durability upgrade, but came at the cost of weight, requiring lighter drive motors as well. The prototypes of what would eventually be Blitz lights on drive didn't work well at all. I nearly had to drop out of the competition due to weeks of delays. I paid extra to rush ship the first Blitz Light prototype motors, and they showed up the day before the competition. I was really hoping now that the motors had arrived, it would be super easy. I could just press the gearboxes and the motors together and put in the screws and everything would be great. But unfortunately, the manufacturer of the gearboxes gave me completely inaccurate drawings. The motors and gearboxes didn't fit together at all. I had to sand carefully around the motor mounting face and sand the face back a bit so that the screw holes would line up and then press them together with an arbor press, praying everything stayed concentric and I didn't destroy my precious one-of-a-kind motors in the process. I was up until 2 a.m. doing this process and destroyed many of my motors, but ultimately I at least was able to get like two sets of drive motors that would actually function most of the time. This was so frustrating though, and I almost gave up right there. Even then, however, I couldn't get my speed controllers to spin them consistently. I was so frustrated by the mechanical and electrical problems, I eventually decided enough was enough. I'll bring both V1 and V2. V2 had the upgraded hub motor for weapon, but pitiful though lighter weight drive, while V1 had its tendency to explode weapon motor shafts, but move quickly and responsively all the time. I ended up having a red knuckles fashion version of V2, and the old tried and true blue V1. Sonic and Knuckles predictably didn't have a great time in competition. Knuckles failed to hold on to both wheels in two separate fights, though somehow still won its first match against the vicious Cheddar Goblin. Sonic grenaded its own weapon motor again, this time just by hitting the opponent into the ceiling, and then still lost that fight in a deeply questionable judge's decision. To get the full story about the Blitz Lights, you'll have to watch that November recap, which I'll link below. 
But now, the production motors and gearboxes are here, and they're actually working great! So it was time to design an all new Sonic V3, and finally match the awesome drive and weapon performance together in one robot. This time I vowed not to leave anything to the last minute. I spent a full day trying to get a new 4-in-1 ESC and an ELRS light receiver to talk to each other. Eventually this led to hours of frustration and I had to revert to the tried and true FS2A receivers that I've been using for years once again. The 4-in-1 still had some weird behavior on occasion, leading to the bot not driving perfectly well, but it was way better than V2 where the motors pretty much had two speeds, cogging and full throttle. With the robot mostly working and a full night of sleep, I had some reasons to be hopeful. However, before this competition, I got a disturbing email from the event organizers. And I quote, Exciting announcement! We are adding a trap door to our arena, which will open for the final 30 seconds of each match. This will provide an additional way for bots to be knocked out by being pushed into the pit. We hope this change will make our matches more exciting and fun for everyone. It was, in fact, not exciting and fun for everyone. Unlike the awesome pneumatic launcher pit of shame at mass destruction, this maker battle pit was an instant KO loss if you fell in. It doesn't matter how you got there, by being pushed, accidental driver error, or chaotic bouncing all over the place. Something Sonic is well known for. This brings us finally to the fights. Up first, a rematch against my friends the Papasians with their giant new control bot, Pool Clooney. It would be hard to design a better robot for an event with an instant KO pit in the middle of the floor. With a 2 minute fight, this gave me 90 seconds to try and kill them before I was screwed. The weapon on Sonic V3 is extremely close to the floor. I opted this time to completely abandon using forks for ground game, and instead rely on about 1mm of clearance between the blade and the ground. This worked amazingly well to tear into Pool Clooney's soft TPU arm and body, but it meant every time Sonic stopped, it could tip forward, hit the floor, and launch itself backwards into a cartwheeling chaotic mess. Right after the pit opened, it was exactly this that made Sonic fall prey to the Pit of Doom. Fight 2 was against an even scarier opponent called Sketch, with a giant saw blade on an articulated arm. Sonic has like 2 millimeters of TPU top armor, so that wasn't going to go super well if they had a chance to use it. Fortunately for me, my sharp spinner ground game was superior once again. I landed a kill shot that tore out Sketch's battery. Like with most non-NHRL events, this counts as an instant KO as a fire would delay the tournament, so Sonic had its first win. Fight 3 would be another tough one, against a Thagomizer-style horizontal spinner called Rabot. Rabot was extremely fast and has a big scary weapon, so this would be a good challenge for the 5022 mini hub motor. I wanted to take out their spinner with my own, so I didn't shy from weapon-on-weapon -weapon exchanges this time. Once the pit was open, however, I was forced to turn off my weapon to try and avoid a bad bounce. Worried about how the judges would see things if Sonic was just running away, I tried to jockey for a good position, but I hit the brakes a fraction of a second too late, and into the pit Sonic went yet again. With those two losses, Sonic was eliminated. I did have a chance for a rematch, however, against the devastating dual horizontal spinner of Cheddar Goblin. This was just a for funsies grudge match against Julian's bot, since Poo Clooney was piloted by his sister Dima. And uh, this one also ended with lots of chaos, and I lost a wheel in the process, but it was still some good fun, and proved that the hub motor is still quite durable. Before I go, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay, who have been awesome in supporting me with some great parts that I use in all of my bots, including CNC machine 7075 aluminum parts, custom PCBs, and more. If you check them out at the link down below, you can get $5 off of your first order. They offer PCB fabrication, CNC machining, and 3D printing services in industrial materials you wouldn't normally find, like even metals like aluminum, titanium, and tool steel. And their prices and lead times are surprisingly good. I can get this custom sprocket made with a weird hub geometry in the center for only $60 and get it in about eight days or two of them for just a bit more. So make sure to check them out, link down below, to get $5 off of your first order. So that begs the question, what is the future looking like for Sonic? Well, uh, it's really more of a question of where is the future for Sonic? Because this bot is great, but I think that the arena with a big hole in the middle of the floor is really not a suitable environment for this robot to be competitive anymore. So I might design a control style robot to fight at Maker Battle in the future, but if they keep the giant pit in the floor, I'm probably not going to be bringing Sonic back anytime soon. 
And right now that event's about a two hour drive for me. And the next closest one pound full combat events are quite a bit further as far as I can tell. So if you guys have any ideas of where I should be competing, that's somewhere near the Boston area, let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you like this video, make sure to click like and hit the bell icon so you get notified when more videos come out. I've got plenty coming up, including a recap for Division, which just fought last weekend at Mass Destruction, and you're not going to want to miss it. All right, that's all I've got for you today. This has been Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, signing off. Goodbye.